Hi, here's part four of our series. Today we're here at Sunseekers Resort in Charlotte Harbor. Mrs. Riggs was recorded in 2018 talking about progress in the county. Let's listen to what she had to say. I'm recording you. What did you say? Uh, what did you say about Placida? They're going to develop all the fishery down there at Placida. It's going to really be something. And they're making a new development in Charlotte Harbor. Huge. With a great Where big, is it? In Charlotte Harbor, where um, Bayshore. It's going to oh. be on Bayshore. It's going to be a huge development. There, um, Wayne is going to be the one that's putting in the pool. The great big pool. His company is going to be putting wow. in. Wow. You know where the. I need to get out and go see all that. You know where, you know where the golf little mini golf course was on on um, Bayshore right there. Yeah. The mini mini golf course. They're going to take that down and put a brand new buildings in there, condominiums, shops. Wow. A boardwalk. A beachfront, a pool. It's called progress. You like progress? I love progress. Tell them here. Look at the camera and say. I love progress. And I wish somebody would come along and want to buy my land. Buy your house? I have a piece right out there joining the school. And they've never made an effort to buy it. It's been out there 30 years. Well, Sunseekers made it, at this point, Placida plans seem to be on ice. Next, Mrs. Riggs talks about the 150-plus-year-old banyan tree in Gilchrist Park. Mrs. Riggs, one of our viewers wants to know if you ever played in the banyan tree. Oh, yes. That was a good and slid down and skipped my legs many a time. Did you put your initials? I had fun. Did you put your initials in the tree? Yeah. So your initials are on that tree too? Yeah, but I don't even know if it's there now. Well, it must be, but it's way up high now. Yeah. Because it's huge. But you I had fun down there. Yeah. Everybody climbed that tree. In Punta Gorda? And hung by one leg. Oh, wow. You hang by one leg to see if you could. Oh, you remember the good old days? Next, Mrs. Riggs talks about one of those life lessons while growing up. Okay, we're here with Mrs. Riggs tonight, and we're here with Wayne. And what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the day I went hunting with my dad. Okay. He told me the night before. Now, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to get plenty of water. Get something to put it in and get something to eat. We'll be out there all day. And I'm not going to stop and start making sandwiches, so fix your lunch. Okay, we got out there. How old were you? I was about 10 or 11. Okay. But me and my sister were both lazy in preparing anything. So anyway, we didn't prepare nothing. So I went out there and it got lunchtime. My dad had fixed himself something. He said, where's your lunch? We didn't bring it. My sister said, we forgot it. He said, that's, that's not good. You're going to have to do without eating now. So we want him to give him his lunch, and he wouldn't do it. He, he wanted to show us how we made a mistake. Teach and you a lesson. We argued and fussed by the afternoon. We were really aggressive with each other because we was hungry. And, uh, they were ready to eat each other. <laughs> <laughs> that was looking like a leg steak there. <laughs> You have to go get some fish. <laughs> if we'd have killed, got something and killed it, we'd eat it. Well, didn't you get a drink out of a ditch? Oh. Tell her, even though you're embarrassed. <laughs> we we got it. We were thirsty. He said, why didn't you bring some water? 
I told Lyndon, I mean Elsie, she told me. Neither one of us did. Okay, you're gonna have to drink that. I got down to get me a drink as I looked and looked over there, there was a dead animal laying where I, the water was flowing over where I was fixing to drink. I can't drink this, Daddy. Well, there ain't nothing else to drink. You should have bought the water. Well, that, that taught me something right then and there to don't pen, depend on nobody else. <laughs> and that's the end of the story? Yeah, fix your own water. You didn't eat anything that day? Huh? Yeah, what was floating in the creek there? No. <laughs> it was a, a, a dead possum or something. <laughs> so that oh taught you a God. lesson. So how long did you work there? Well, that was definitely a life lesson. Next, we'll hear about George Dewey and his role when she was growing up. Tell me the story about George Dewey. When, when I knew George Dewey, he was working for Seward's. And Seward's run a dry goods store. And my notes say that he used to sing at the movie theater. He did what? He sang in the movie theater. Oh, yeah. He used to sing, and he had a beautiful voice. Before and ugly. He, he would, uh, well, at the movie theater, for a while there, they had a piano on the stage. Yeah. And someone would get up there, and I believe his name was Bradshaw. Goldstein? Goldstein. Had a beautiful voice, and he sang. And that would be our entertainment before the movies. Oh. How much did it cost to get in the movies back oh, then? About 25 cents. Oh, wow. Uh, and did they have popcorn and yeah. soda like they do now? Oh, they, yeah. They do? Oh. Okay. It, it, was, it was nice. You had, uh, I remember when they stopped singing on the stage and playing the piano. Oh, he, those, uh, the singer, they all had beautiful voices. And uh, you, all the family, but they had one that was a little crippled boy. And uh, I never heard him sing, but boy, they had some did, beautiful voices. Did you ever try to go up on the stage? Huh? Did you ever try to go up on the stage and sing? No. You never tried? No, I, I, uh, the only thing I went on stage is when they had some comedy and I was in it. Mm. 25 cents to get into the movies? Wow. Mrs. Riggs is going to talk about the Bailey brothers next. Okay, tell us about the Bailey boys. All right. Dad went to town. We were on the bridge. And he wanted to catch this two fish that grunted underneath our house. Yeah. So he went and had the Bailey boys make him a hook. Mm -hmm. And they said he won't get off this hook the way we made it. So Daddy hitched it up that morning and threw it over. And when he latched on to it, the fish, he pulled that rope. It was a rope. And he pulled it until it made the whole house shake and trying to, to get away from that hook. Now, we, we, I, I wonder why you didn't cut up the fish and eat it. Huh? You didn't cut up the big fish and eat it? I don't remember what we did with that fish. Yeah. But, but when he pulled him in, he, he uh, drowned his own self trying to get off the hook. Yeah. He couldn't get off that hook. There's some way they made that hook so it caught inside his mouth. And, and it had a little stuff to catch. Hmm. It was a nice one. Do you remember Berlin Bailey that loved to play the saxophone? Yeah, oh, he was good. Yeah, and did he play in the bars? Yeah, and they played for our graduation. Oh. And they played uh, for our... our um, what is it you call it you have before you graduate? A dinner dance? Yeah, they played for that. And every once in a while, they'd all get up and walk 
backstage. Yeah. And as they come back to play, they got better. They go backstage a little while and come back, and the music got really swinging. Yeah, because they were drinking. Yeah. <laughs> they knew how to do it, baby. Yeah. They <laughs> and each time they went backstage, they, the music got better. Listen. Have a good night. You too. Listen. Did you have the cap and gowns back then, too? Did you wear a cap and gown at your graduation? Yes. You had it back then, the cap and gowns? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we... we the uh, cap and the gowns? Oh, yes. And what color were they? Were they blue and gold? Blue, and then we had the gold tassel. Oh. I still got the tassel. I have mine, too, from 72. Yeah. Blue and gold. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that is so weird. That's so cool that you remember that and you have it. Yeah. Well, this concludes part number four. Please stay tuned for final part number five, which will be coming soon. Bye for now.